So when we're looking at this, the main important thing is we're trying to determine this rule. So the first thing I always like to do with the rule is label what your a sub 1, 2, 3, and 4 would be. So Jamie, I simply just write those numbers a top. All right? Now, the first thing we always like to do is look for addition and subtraction. If here's my first term, what do I need to do to get to my value? I need to add 2. So would it make sense for the first number? I could say a sub n equals n plus 2. Does that work for the first number? Yes. Yes. Does it work for the next one? No. No, right? So now I go ahead and look at for multiplication and division. Well, what do I need to multiply three. to get to my first? So I could say a sub n equals 3n, right? Because if I plug in 1, that gives me my first value. Does that work for the second one? No. no. So now the next thing I want to do is, is look for a collection of addition and subtraction and multiplication, multiplication and division. If those don't work, we'll get into squaring, cubing, and different things, but let's look for that first. So I can look for, I can multiply by 2 and add 1, right? I can multiply this by 2, but if I add 1, that's not going to give me the 7. So then we look into multiplying and maybe some subtracting. Well, exactly as somebody already set out, I can write the rule as 4n minus 1, because 4 times 1 is 4, minus 1 is 3. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7. And you can see it works for the rest of those values. Okay? So that is how you guys write the rule for that one. Cool? Is that a finite sequence? That is a finite sequence.